We're live. Welcome, welcome, everybody. How we doing today? Welcome to another Pep Tuesday. Uh, this is a Pep Tuesday that I've been sitting on for some time. Uh, I have really wanted to get back into making a full costume for myself for some time. I've got a lot of commissions and things happening in the background. Good evening, Orlando. Uh, but uh, I've really wanted to do something uh, big just for myself for some time. And, uh, you know, after chatting with some people, uh, I think I'm going to make a full Republic Commando, uh, which I think is going to be really fun. I'm not sure who it's going to be yet, but, uh, you know, we're going to work on the sculpts. And we're going to see where that, that process takes us uh, because we've got some really great templates out there. Uh, but uh, the first step on that journey is going to be measuring and scaling the armor because, of course, I upload all of my armor pieces in multiple pieces. And, of course, the scale isn't always, uh, or at least the scale reference isn't always the same between them. And you got to scale it for yourself anyway. So here we go. Good evening, Melvin. Glad you guys can make it. Glad everybody can make it. We're going to be uh, streaming for a little bit here. And we're going to be chatting on the various ways to, uh, oh my gosh, I just spilled some, some stuff here. One second. Uh, we're going to be t chatting on the various ways to get your final scale for these kinds of models. Uh, it's been a long day, it's been a full day, uh, and it's about to get a little bit fuller. So let's dive right in. Now, many of you will recognize these templates here. They are my base Republic Commando Helmet Templates. Yo, hey Koa, glad you could be here. Uh, I really like these templates. Uh, to wit, I sell an upgraded version of them on my Etsy with a whole bunch of, whole bunch of added details. If you're on an airplane, well that's pretty neat. Uh, so we are going to be uh, chatting on this tonight. So let's start here. I will mention first and foremost that uh, the helmet templates are were roughly scaled to me to begin with uh, because, of course, I was the one who needed to make them first. So I don't need to rescale these uh, so much as I get the absolute pleasure of just sort of getting to use the scale uh, and sort of back justifying that. So let's, let's see what that looks like to begin with. Now, my head, let's see here, my head is about... seven and a half inches wide. Uh, so let's translate that to what size the helmet is because the helmet, like I said, works perfectly for me scale wise. And my head is seven and a half inches wide. So let's see, we're going to go to 2D menu, edit mode, measure distance between two points. Now, when we measure distances between two points in Pepicura, we can do that in the 2D menu or we can do it in the 3D menu. To wit, I can go from here to here and it'll give me that measure. It looks like 11.06. Or I can go in the 3D space from here to here, and that's 7.07 .07 inches. Now, it says 7.07 .07 inches right there, but the reality is because of the way foam works and its thickness, it's going to push outward just a little bit. It's also going to have a little bit in. So we, we reevaluate there. And then I also check because the the ear cups essentially are pushed outward a little bit. So it's actually a little bit more appropriate to measure from about there to about there. So that's about 7.72 inches. So between the difference between those, we've probably got enough buffer in there for my head. Now, one thing that's really important to note when you're making something out of Pepicura is that, you know, the dimensions aren't static all the way down. Like this helmet isn't a tube. The, the widest part of the helmet isn't necessarily as wide as the bottom lip. Now, when I made this, I trimmed a good deal off of this just because I really wanted to be able to freely fit my head in. Uh, to it, you can see it comes pretty far up near the, at the front end of the helmet. Um, and it allows me to get my head in just, just cleanly. And my ears <laughs> just sort of scrape along the sides. Uh, which is perfect for me. Now, you may want, want to trim more. You may want to trim less. You may not want even to do the bottom piece here. And that's fine. Any way you slice that, that is a totally fine way to approach this build. But it's something to consider. Because if I were to just do this as is, going st roughly straight across here, it's only 5.42 inches. Now, to give you a reference of scale for that, that's only about that wide. And I am decidedly wider than 5.42 inches. So it's really important that when you're scaling things, you consider multiple dimensions. Now, 
one thing that we haven't considered is that it's entirely possible now with this one it's not as probable but it's entirely possible that you have a helmet that is uh wider than it is long significantly like maybe it's a very squash thing or maybe it's a mask um and so it's also prudent to measure in another direction just for safety's sake let's say i grab uh from the about the top of my head here to just under the jaw that's 11.13 inches now this is a good reference for that because if i were actually draw that line in 3d space it's about it's about that space with just a little bit of buffer on either side i like about a quarter inch to a half inch buffer and, and that buffer is is again kind of flexible it really depends on how intense these curves are uh how crazy the shape is so it's important to note that this is going to vary a lot just based on what you're doing with yourself here so let's go through um, now that uh, I've sort of yada yada my way through the helmet, which of course was already scaled, I don't need to mess with it. I like the scale. Even if I go to change scale, I can just show you. Uh, the unit scale unit isn't super important to me because of the way I've scaled it, which is just to make sure uh, that it's about the right size in depth with how I wound up doing it. Um, and that wound up with a height and a width that uh, did not wig me out. Uh, and I wasn't worried about... Uh, you know, having too little space on any of those. Sorry, everybody, they're redoing uh, our roof right now, so you might hear some knocking in the background. Um, so now, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, just for the sake of going forward, I'm gonna go to the 3D menu and click Show Dimension Lines, and that'll just give us a rough outer scale. It'll show us those three dimensions uh, without having to pull up that menu, and we can sort of kind of guess our way through this. Uh, some of these are probably going to be about the right size already. Some of them we may want to adjust. And some of them we may talk a little bit about what it means to adjust a piece for you. So strap in. Um, I'm just going to start, I think, from the chest piece and go forward. If anybody has, hey, Melina, glad you can make it. We're talking about scaling. We're talking about lots of different armor pieces. And we're talking about Pepecura. Uh, if anybody has a specific piece of the armor that they really, really want me to get to, to tonight, because maybe you're trying to scale that type of armor piece for something else, please let me know. Uh, of course, our time is always limited, but uh, I do want to show as much of the process as I can. So let's let's do the thing. Uh, let's start with the chest piece here. All right. Uh, so the chest piece is really nice. Um, I like this because unlike some chest pieces that I've seen uh, where they basically try to just add this piece to the back, uh, this this raised area here here we'll grab that all together they try to add just a piece to the back uh which makes it very slim in the back i like this because i i'm thinking about trying to put a little fan in the back here to try and draw some air through uh because for those of you who don't know full armor suits get really really hot uh, especially walking around at a con all day so i think there's a lot of really fun places for me to uh mess with this and add some really cool uh features to it that will be great for ma. Uh, but let's start here. So it looks like right now it's set at 15 inches tall. Not sure about that. 15.27 inches side to side. So uh, height and width is, are about the same dimension here. It's, it's roughly square this way. Um, and then it's only f roughly 14 inches in depth. So it's actually almost cubic uh, in overall dimension, which is just kind of interesting. I don't know if that really helps us so much. Uh, but we will be able to sort of start from here. Now I'm going to get a bigger, where's my, uh oh, I just had a, oh, that's okay. I'll just grab my handy dandy tape measure. Now we are scaling in full dimensions here. We're not scaling around. That's not really something Pepecure is super designed to do. We can kind of do it with this one. Because as you can see, most of it has been laid flat in one direction here. So yeah. uh, if I were to go to the 2D menu, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, edit mode and measure distance between two points. I could say grab from what is essentially that to here. So let's see here. From there to there, come up with a dimension of 40.3 inches plus uh, this dimension right here, so about three inches. Uh, so we could probably say about 43 and a half inches, roughly, around. Now, I could take that and uh, try to take it and just very... Actually, do I still have my... 
actually wondering if I have my fabric measure here. I don't see it. That's okay. This will be good enough for what we want to do. We're just going to kind of take it around the, the midsection here and say, oh, it's about, let's see, at its widest, I want to be, I want to be generous with myself here. At its widest, it's about 46 inches. Now remember, we want to add about a half inch to that because we want thickness for the foam and, you know, a little bit of wiggle room. And some of these pieces are going to need to slot over each other. You know, the, the abs are going to stick under this piece. So if I wanted to, I could scale, scale this up, say, at 46, 46 and a half inches. Um, and we started at, what, 43 and a half? So 46.5 divided by, excuse me, yep, 46.5 divided by 43.5 is a 1.0689. So I need to, to multiply uh, our scale unit right now by that number. So let's see, change scale, set scale. So our current unit is that. We can go C, control C, grab that, and multiply that by, come on. Fine, I'll copy it, it won't let me. Control C, we'll just do that. All right, fine, I'll type it manually. God dang it, 38.540248. We'll be as close as we can just because we're allowed to. Uh, it brings us to a new scale unit of this right here. Math, it's always what everybody wants to see when we set out to do this. So. I, I would say this is probably pretty close in terms of the actual scale unit we need to end with. Uh, because it says, what, 16 and a third inches side to side. Let's grab our tape measure again and say, set it to uh, 16 and a third. That, that looks pretty good. I would say as a flat measure, that's probably just about right. I might even take this and add like a half inch side to side, just cause like I said, I wanna, I wanna make sure that I've got a little bit of wiggle room. And again, we have pieces that sort of slot underneath this. So this is supposed to be really big and bulky. Uh, the Republic Commando armor is, is a tank uh, and it's got a lot of room in there for the body. It's really funny. I've actually seen some people walk around in costumes of their, their commandos. Um, and it's so funny just to see, cause they'll have like muscle suits on and things because the Republic Commandos jacked uh way more jacked than the average clone who is shockingly slim um and so their arms just kind of come out to here and they're kind of walking around and 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 sort of moving shoulder to shoulder there um and so i i'm not afraid of that kind of business there so let's say we'll take this from there to there and we will make that uh 0.5 or excuse me 0.83 and we call that a day. Now, one thing that's really important when you're scaling Papakura is you can just hit print like this, uh, but I think it's worth doing just a little bit of page optimization, trying to, uh, you know, push back and, and get some of those pieces back on uh, a roughly the same amount of pages they were on before, if we can. Yeah, just like that. Look at that. There we go, and now uh, now it's back to, what is that? Uh, eight plus nine is uh, uh, 17. So now it's only 17 pages again. Of course, this is a huge piece, uh, and I would struggle a little bit to get it on some pieces of foam, but I'm willing to bet, let's see actually, if I edit mode, measure distance between two points, from here to, what's about, that's about a straight line, 17 inches, so this should fit. This should fit on a, on a single foam roll, just end to end. It's just going to be a lot of that roll because it goes from there to there, which is 48 inches. So it's, it's the four feet. It's, it's virtually the entire length of a foam roll. <laughs> uh, but of course, then you're getting a very clean piece. That's mostly one piece. Uh, so I'm really excited about this one in particular, because I think it's one of those pieces that's going to go together really quickly. Uh, but then it's going to have some really fun uh, heat forming opportunities, which is one of the reasons I love using foam. Hey, Shadow Fox Cosplays. Glad to have you with us. 
We are talking Pepikira, we're talking Scalin, and I think that this one we're gonna call done. Uh, and one thing I really like to do when I'm working on a project for me that I wanna make sure everything is scaled, you'll note my, my standard conventions for um, describing models in their name is I'll describe the model and where it's from. So in this case, Republic Commando Chest, model by, and whoever the modeler is, unless it's me, then I just say foam templates. Uh, but then foam templates by foam armory. Um, and then for, for my own reckoning, usually what I'll do, usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll go, I'll, I'll resave it, but I'll save as, I'll create a new folder, call it fully scaled Republic Commando. I will add my name to know that it's not a commission, it's, it's mine. And then at the end of our file name, I will go bop bop scaled to know that it's finished and done. And this one's done. I, I don't need to touch it again until I print it and call it a day. That's, that's life, right? So that's why a lot of clone commando cosplayers look so jacked. Yes. Oh, and this is another cool thing. So you can, okay. So, so when you're wearing armor and you want to look jacked, you can just get jacked. That's totally fine. But. A lot of games and movies don't design armor with the intention of you actually being able to move, so they'll just kind of trick it by having things clip through themselves. Uh, so one of the things that's really nice about uh, wearing a muscle suit instead is that those muscles will actually sort of squish and compress and move around uh, so that even as you try to put your arms down, it'll kind of push things out. So you don't look silly, but there's like some room for you to actually move. You need to figure out how you're going to make a muscle suit for your Doomslayer cosplay. Muscle suits are actually pretty simple, and I'll probably wind up making one for this, so that's totally optional. There's lots of really easy ways to trick muscles. I think I brought this up on the channel before, uh, but you can just take EVA foam and make, like, some muscly shapes. They're not super hard to make, um, and they do actually pad out your shoulder pretty well, and they're pretty easy to to move around in and you can get some good definition. Uh, but I had, at some point, I don't know where it is, I had a, um, a muscle shirt that I used for a Flash cosplay, <laughs> uh, like a classic Jay Garrick Flash, and that was all upholstery foam. And that stuff is super great for cosplay, uh, especially if you're not super jazzed about trying to sew together a muscle suit, which I, I can recommend if, if you've got the time and talent, but you know, otherwise, Spray glue some upholstery foam down, you know? <sighs> okay. Oh, whoops. I'm noticing now that I did goof slightly here. There we go. And I had the, those were overlapping just a little bit. There we go. Now they're not overlapping. Save. Let's open up another one. Okay. Uh, go from the chest. You know, from the chest, we might as well go to the abs, you know? And I'm thinking... I should actually just open up another window and open up the abs to make sure that the abs fit me and they fit the overall piece. I think that's going to be super important here. So let's go. I've got, so I've got, a, oh, wait, that's right. We're not going to do the abs and cod right now. We're going to do a different something. Let's try, let's do, let's do an arm piece instead. Uh, for reasons I will make clear in a little bit. Left gauntlet. All right, so this is the left gauntlet. You can tell because of the way it is. Uh, actually, it's because of the way the elbow sits against the uh, wrist armor there. Um, so this is actually three pieces of armor all in one. Now, the elbow piece we don't need to be super concerned about uh, because, obviously, the elbow is just going to scale to the size of the forearm piece, which is great. That's exactly what we want it to do. I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, the hand piece, we will want to check, make sure, double check, uh, that it, you know scaling this forearm doesn't give us a hand plate that's like three times the size of our, our hand for whatever reason. Uh, I don't think it will be just because of the relative scale, but let's go through and scale this set of armor pieces as though we're scaling just the forearm and see where that gets us rather than trying to do the whole thing at once. So, whoa. Super weird. Sorry, I was trying to overflow there for a second. So, 
Let's start in on this. Uh, this is another great case where we can kind of measure the around, sort of the, the circumference of, say, the wrist. Um, or we could do it from the thickest part of the arm, which is going to be just below these circles. So why don't we actually do that? Let's go to 2D mode, go back to measure distance between two points. So go from here to here. Okay, so I'm reading 10.28 plus... Uh, let's see, from there to there, so from here to here, 1.29. So it's about 11.6. So, so a little over 11 and a half inches. Ah, I'm sorry about that. That's real rough. It's real rough. Depression's nothing to mess around with. I, um, I've had those battles. We're just glad you're here. Um, so... About 11.6 inches. Let's see. How far around is this here forearm? So at its widest, it's about 11 inches, which is okay. Uh, 11 inches is fine. 11.6 inches is probably going to make sure that this is nice and, and uh, cozy. Uh, again, Republic Commando armor isn't skin tight. Uh, it's meant to go on really simply, uh, and it's meant to be a tank. So this thing having a little bit of breathing room around is great. We'll just pad the inside. Uh, to that end, let's make sure that we can do a couple of different things. One, I'd really like to make sure that my hand can get through it. Um, so we'll measure my hand at its, at crudely at its, about its thinnest. Uh, because, of course, I can, you know, fit my hand together like this. See, that's about four inches across. Let's check the opening of this inside. In this particular instance, the fact that there is thickness pieces to this model is really nice because I can measure using those. It says it's only about 3.27. Let's measure across here as well, uh, just because it will be a little bit bigger there. Hmm. Well, I guess the real question is, can my hand get a little thinner across at all? Or do I need to evaluate? Oh, I suppose, suppose I can get it down to about three and a half inches. So this is probably pretty good. I would probably call this pretty good, and I'll just double check on the back here. Yeah, this is probably going to be a good scale as we are right here. How do you do join the closed parts of some templates since when I unfold the templates, the templates are left with many cuts that the program does not allow me to join? Ha! That's super easy. All you do is go to 2D menu, join adjacent edges, and then you set your threshold. Super simple. Um, I might have an example for you later in the stream because we are gonna still do some unfolding tonight. Uh, but I would say this is actually probably already scaled pretty good for what we wanna do. Uh, again, we'll just kinda double check uh, against some of those other pieces. Uh, to wit, let's grab, here's, oh, okay. So here is the hand, hand plate here. Let's measure at about its widest here on the interface. Looks like 3.76. 3.76, about 3.75 inches. You know, I think we could probably scale this whole thing up just ever so slightly if we really wanted to. Um, but I think, you know what, let's do it. Let's do it. Change scale, set scale. Let's take the original unit. Well, it's a 3.0.0393. Let's just round that up to 0.04. And look at that. Just just a hair bigger overall. Uh, but I do think uh, we'll be happier for that hair. And just making sure everything still fits nicely on those pages. It does. Uh, so we'll go ahead and file. Save as. Drop it in that new folder again. Bam, scaled. How's it going, man? It's going well. We are scaling some Republic Commando armor today. Uh, let's see, we'll open up a new piece here. Uh, we just did the left gauntlet. Uh, you know, we might as well, let's, let's do the, uh, the bicep. Um, I'm very grateful that in this particular instance, I'm fairly certain I checked that this bicep is almost uh, perfectly able to just flip over to the other side. Um, 
in terms of the, the actual reference. I, I don't think there's anything different side to side, uh, but I really like the way this looks overall. Um, and again, we're in a very good position to do sort of a, a wrap piece. Now, one thing that's a little rough about trying to do a full measure around this piece is it's not just cylindrical or just fully round. It does have sort of corners to it. And of course it cuts in slightly around the tricep and at the front of the bicep there. So to do this one, we're probably gonna have to do a little bit of uh, trickery and a little bit of um, you know s measuring in multiple dimensions at once. Now there's a really great point right in the center there and we can probably do right about there. So that says 4.81 inches, uh, which is from the innermost face that is of the bicep at the front uh, to about roughly the average at the back. So it's 4.81, so that's like it's about that much. So let's see how we're looking here. I think that uh, this could definitely stand, this could definitely stand to be bigger. I am actually gonna be so bold as to say, uh, rather than trying to futz with the scale a bunch, why don't we just go to change scale and just scale it up 10%, flat 10%, and see what that does for us, because I think it needs a pretty beefy edit. So that's 5.3 inches now, about five and a third inches about that much and I would call that much better I would almost say I'm gonna make a muscle because here's the thing there will come a time during the day where I make a muscle for any reason whether I I'm actually lifting something or I just I make a pose and I my my biceps scooch up you know I might as well make that muscle and say you know what let's go even bigger let's scale it up another 10 percent now this is actually a really important math question here. I did not just scale this up 20%. I scaled it up 10% and then another 10%. So I scaled it up to 110% and that was a new flat 100 and then took another 10% of that. So in terms of math, it's a little bit different, but it's, it's worth noting just because I know this is, this can get away from you kind of fast. So this is closer, this is almost six inches now. I'm inclined to call that good because remember that this is the innermost edges and there are there is more space at the top and at the bottom. Now let's let's wedge this together here. Get this to a place that we really like that we can try to get as much of this onto the the pages as we can. There we go. Yeah, just barely. Look at that. Oh, glad to have you with us, Pack. Thanks so much. Uh, just thinking how it could be is a, is a pain in the ass. Uh, you know, scaling the model digitally, it can be a pain in the butt. Usually, I'm able to get this to a place that I'm actually pretty happy with. Like, I don't, I don't worry too much about my scaling these days. Uh, usually, what happens uh, if if I'm having trouble scaling? Usually, what's happened? Here, let's go ahead and save this, real quick. Yeah, scaled. Bam. Usually what has happened if I'm having an issue is I've done something like messed up my print settings, which actually I suppose I should check. Print and paper, yep, letter, about a half inch margin, that's great. Usually what'll happen is I've, I've screwed up my print settings in some way so as to uh, either it's it's trying to print to the wrong scale of paper uh, or maybe my margins or my, my yada is in such a way that uh, it tries to rescale it for me to fit everything inside the printable area and suddenly nothing works because of course you're trying to adjust the scale again after you've already completely adjusted the scale so it's just going to wudge everything in the wrong direction. I think the worst thing I've ever done is try to uh, adjust uh, adjust something up to fit A4 uh, size paper because of course A4 size paper is a little bit bigger. Um, you wind up with a piece that's just like, uh, I think it's like 5% bigger overall, which you don't think is that much, but suddenly you go from a helmet that like fits right to fits like a little like a bobblehead and you can see it. Morning, this commando armor is looking top notch. Thank you. Uh, these templates are free, by the way. Um, the only templates of the Republic Commando I have that are, are for paid uh, are I have an upgraded set of patterns for the helmet, uh, which uh, is actually linked not only in this video, but in a, uh, a video that I went ahead and 
uh, was working on uh, for a while ago. There's our full our full video. Um, let me. I'm gonna do something real quick. I I feel like I'm too dark for some reason. I feel like for some reason uh, my face is just like super dark on screen. So I'm gonna just adjust that. I hope I hope that's better. Sorry, I'm I'm just trying to adjust this on the fly here. Uh, I'm really excited about this this armor set though. Uh, I've wanted to make something you know fully mine for some time now, and I've just I've been a little bit um, on edge about what it should be, and I, I finally just kind of decided on this. So uh, I think this is this is looking pretty good though. I'm really happy with these templates in particular. I think they're going to be very easy to make. Um, so let's jump from there. I, we might as well round out the arm. Uh, so the thing about the arm here is that I would go ahead and say that the shoulder is actually kind of obnoxiously big for the Republic Commando. So you're going to have to kind of eyeball it. Um, let me see here. So here's the shoulder that I've been working with. I think this, yeah, this is Fear Effects shoulder. So let's see, let's take a look at a Republic Commando armor, because I would really like to highlight what I'm, what I'm showing off here. Uh, which is just that the shoulder pieces on uh, this appears to be somebody's kit that they've really taken some liberties with there um let's see here yeah, it says inspired yeah that's a little bit better um you can see the shoulders just super broad like it's broader by far than the bicep which does make sense for armor but it, it is just huge and like if you look at cosplayers with it you can see it, it sticks way out i would say that that's about yay big here I'm I'm kind of like eyeballing it, based on my, on my everything here. I would say it's about yay big. It's probably like six and a half inches long. Um, so we can go ahead and just say, hey, this is ten point two four from uh from uh, a right angle to it. I'm guessing that means we're probably gonna be somewhere in that neighborhood. If I t just take edge to edge here. This is pretty easy. 12.42. I think that is too big because that would be from there to there. And that's not right. That's too big. Um uh let's 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 take it down instead to like uh you know cuz with the bicep piece on there that's going to push out a little bit. Let's take it down to like seven and a half instead. So let's see here. Let's do that math again. Uh, so 12.42, 12.42 divided by 7.5 is equal to 1.656. Okay, so we need to divide, we need to divide our current scale number uh, 47 point something there, uh, by 1.656. 47 point 4960061 divided by 1.656. Twenty-eight point six. Wow, it's a significant difference here. Let's go ahead. We'll drop that in there. And there we go. Yeah, that's way more reasonable. Holy cats! Uh, you're not very wise in Pepicura software, so you just scale images and templates in Word. Oh, you can do that. You can do like you can scale templates in in like Adobe. Uh, PDF viewer, if you want, because of course I do release these all as, as Pepicure files, but the thing about that is I feel like as, as free, as far as free software goes, Pepicure has perhaps some of the best reference images and the re best reference for how things go together. And of course gives you these amazing scale lines that should sort of give you an idea of how everything works. So I, I just feel like I feel like that that might be a, a bit of a waste, just because you could you could do so much more. 
And this seems to make more sense to me in terms of the scale we're sitting at right now. Because if I were to grab just a piece of printer paper, which is, of course, what that's sitting across here, suddenly it, it, that scale-wise looks about right. So I'm, I'm inclined to say this is pretty good. If anything, gosh, I might scale it up like 10% just because uh, I, I want to make sure that I've got that about right. And 8.25 actually seems pretty, pretty, pretty good there, especially given the size of my shoulder and, and of course, pushing out for the bicep piece. That seems all right. Let's just go ahead. Oh, whoops. Redo. No, what? Okay, that was weird. Um, okay, so now we've got it here. Got that scaled up to, to that 8 point, what was it, 8.25? Yeah, that'll be good. Let's go ahead and make sure this all fits here. I'm gonna control G, I'm gonna move these together. Control, group, come on. There we go. I'm gonna group these together just so that I can rotate them into that space. And look, now everything's back on the three pages instead of on on uh, four pages here. Keep rotating that just a little bit. And yeah, there we go. Just like that. We're conserving a little paper and a little bit of time printing this all out. And I think we can save that now. I'll, well, I'll do that thing I said I should do or check the print paper settings. Looks good to me. Again, making sure I print page numbers and alignment numbers because it can be hard to keep track of that stuff once it's out of the printer. Okay, let's go ahead and file, save as, we save it as scaled. We are well on our way to scaling a full suit of armor. Uh, this is this is I know kind of a tedious process, but it is the like bridge gap between I have unfolded my templates and I have made my thing. Uh, and these this is you know it's free software. It, it lets you do this very efficiently, very quickly comparatively, I feel, um, in, in a way that's just super nice. Now, one thing that you can do is you can use other ancillary software, like there's the uh, armor, like, excuse me, uh, uh, software like Armorsmith. Armorsmith is capable of shunting pep files, uh, multiple pep files at once, um, and scale them to, uh, say, a, a body form that you can do in digital space. That works. You can also scale these things in Blender against, say, a photo scan of yourself. Now, that's all very complicated and a little high tech. This is a ruler in Pepecura. You know, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty straightforward, if not a little tedious. Now, let's see. We've done the arm. We've done the chest plate. Uh, let's do a thigh. Let's do a thigh. So the thigh piece is actually pretty round. I feel pretty good about this thigh piece. Uh, the one thing that's a little rough about it that will prevent us from doing what we did with the chest piece, where we actually just measure from point to point, uh, is that it's got some angularity to it. So there's a couple different things that means. One, I want to make sure that uh, I'm not getting a flat circle around my thigh uh, because it will not sit around my thigh like a flat circle. In fact, if, if I get it to sit around my thigh as a flat circle, I've made a huge mistake because that means it's way too small. This thing has to be have some heft to it. Um, it also means that uh, the bottom here and the top are going to have space around my thigh inherently because my thigh doesn't have corners. Uh, at least I hope my thigh doesn't have corners. And I hope your thigh doesn't have corners. Um, so let's go ahead. Uh, I'm just going to take a quick measure around me thigh at the widest point possible. Um, uh, knowing full well that it's entirely possible that I may end up... Uh, scooting the edge of this thigh down even further just because my thighs are chunky. Let's see here. Okay, that looks like just over 30 inches around. Um, so let's let's start with the across the 2D menu method here because obviously you know, if it's 30, it's about 30 inches across in the 2D menu, we've already made a mistake because it needs to be more than that. So let's start, let's start, uh, we can go from here sort of just straight across to, to there. 
So 7.84, we'll, we'll add these all together as we go. 7, 7 point, you know what? I should do this on a calculator that you guys can see. Let's go calculator. Here we go. Now we got a calculator up on screen. We're, we're real professionals now. Okay, so we got a calculator here. We'll do 7.84. Okay. Plus. Uh, let's see if we went across right there-ish. Uh, that's going to be about there. From there to there. Plus 12.84. So that that is too small um, so that's that's about 10 inches too small now I can see why I might have thought this might be right because I scaled this to about a foot tall and it does seem at first glance that about a foot might be appropriate but this is of course going to have to change a little bit because of my personal proportions now one thing we can think about doing is if we're a little unsure of whether or not just scaling this up is going to fix our problem. Like, let's say, let's say I wanted to really jack the scale here. Um, let's say, let's say I was unhappy with how wide it is because uh, right now it's what it's 6.57 inches in width. That is not big enough by any means. Let's say I wanted to just crudely measure up to about nine and a half, about nine and a half inches. Actually, let's call it 9.25. I'm being picky. Let's say I wanted to do that. Now it's a 16-inch thigh. Now, I don't know how comfortable I am with that. Because on the one hand, this, of course, is not 16 inches across the top of the thigh. It's 16 inches from the very highest point of the thigh down to where it almost meets, like, the knee. So that, that could be appropriate. Uh, so if I go 16, what is that, 16.32, it's about that big. So if I actually go up from about there to about there, that, that could be appropriate. Like, I could see that that being appropriate in terms of size. Um, I almost might scale it back down ever so slightly. But then, of course, it does say 10.28 back to back, and that and that's almost on the money. So maybe this is actually where we want to be. Um, the other thing I could do is if I wasn't sure I could scale it up and down anymore, but I really wanted to get more width out of it, what I could do is I could go and I could repaint in some lines. So let's, actually I'll paint them in red because they're not, they're, they're not meant to be doing what we're doing. Let's see, we'll, we'll paint that in there and then, yep, same dealio here. We'll paint just straight down the piece here. And what we can do then is we can actually cut our pattern piece up that red line. And if we need to add, say, an inch in width or, 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 or space around in circumference, all we need to do then is cut the pattern piece up the back, widen it, and it'll be widened along both edges, so it'll be fine, and then stick it on you. That's all you need. So I think I might leave it like this. I'll make sure that the scale is still working for me. Um, I kind of, I wish this was going to fit a little better. I really feel like it's not going to. I feel like this is like pretty much maxing out what I can do for it in terms of uh, saving printer space. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, unless I can get this up here, I think, I feel like I can't, I think this is too big. Uh, oh, I'll be damned. Okay. Well, I saved, uh, exactly one, one printer page. So, oh no, that's not on the page at all. Never mind. Undo, 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 undo. Undo, undo, undo. That's not going to work. So we'll just stick that back down there and call it a day. Nine pages. We'll call that fully scale. <laughs> On the 4th of July, 1806, we set sail from the sweet Coba Cork. We were sailing away with a cargo of bricks for the Grand City Hall in New York. Such a wonderful craft she was rigged for and aft. And oh, how the wild winds draw over. She stood several blasts. She had 27 masts. And they called her the Irish Rover. 
Let's see, we did the thigh. Let's do a shin. Let's see here. Here's a shin. Another fear effect model here. Uh, we did some pretty heavy editing on this one to smooth things out, though. Uh, but I'm really quite happy with the way it ended up. So, to that end, uh, let's talk a little bit about this. Because, of course, the knee is going to need to match the shin in scale. But, uh, sometimes your shin pieces can tend to uh, err on the side of being way too long. Uh, because usually, from my experience... Uh, when people make what are called heroically proportioned characters, um, uh, when we talk about the scale of people and the scale of, say, comic book characters, uh, we usually tend to refer to them in heads tall. And I think uh, the average person is like six heads tall. You know, let me let me double check that. How many heads tall is a person? Persons, persons, roughly seven and a half. Excuse me. Uh, whereas I, I think heroic people are about eight and a half, like an extra head. Um, and to that end, they need to, when they're trying to create these heroically proportioned people, uh, they need to make up that distance somewhere. And I find a lot of characters, that distance is made up in the leg, specifically in the shin, but also in the thigh. Um, thighs, it's a little harder to do because it's really easy to make that thigh look really long and weird. Uh, but the shin, people are used to comic book and heroic people having super tapered shins with, like, big beefy calves. So it's really easy to hide extra length in there. To that end, means that if we're not careful, uh, we can wind up scaling this thing so it fits us one direction, but suddenly it's, like, way too long. There's no way it could possibly fit a, a human being. So we're going to have to be careful of that. Hey, Dayaxis! Welcome to the stream. We are talking about scaling Pepikiro. We are talking about uh, going through and, you know, just going piece by piece and making sure that each of these armor pieces fits you and that they don't look super weird next to one another. Uh, to that end, big sip. Mm. Let's go ahead and start scaling. Uh, I'm going to prioritize scaling the shin part first. And then sort of backtrack to make sure that the knee's not going to stick super high up. Uh, because if we get this and suddenly uh, the knee's going to be intersecting with the, the thigh weirdly, you know, obviously we've, we've made a mistake. Um, so let's, let's start here. Uh, I'm going to just open up the scale here. Uh, it looks like right now it's 5.45 inches across. Now I think that might just be incorrect because my shin is just bigger than that. So let's... Let's get the leg up there. Yeah, I would say that conservatively, my shin itself is about six and a half inches across. My, my calf is about six and a half inches across. Uh, and to be comfortable with that, I would need to be about seven inches across uh, just because of width and things. And I would almost even go just a little bit further at like seven and an eighth, um, which is 7.125 for, for a layman among us. So let's say 7.125. The pep duh, d the pep des cowboy hat brim problems. What? I don't I don't think I I don't think I fully I fully understood that. Uh, I know pep cowboy. Are you referring to pep cowboy? Or you were actually talking about like a pep like a like a hat brim. I'm not totally sure. I'm sorry. Um, so let's, we've scaled this up now, but I can already kind of feel that this is too much. Uh, because suddenly, this overall feature is 22.41 inches. And I think that that might be pushing it. Yep, because now, even if I push all the way down to the edge of my ankle, suddenly it's coming up to my mid-thigh. So that is not going to cut it. This may be a, a, an instance, like I was talking about, where we want to go through and add some width in the in the vertical so that we can actually widen it up uh, because otherwise this thing in terms of scale is going to get so large so fast that there's just no there's just no way we're going to be able to get it on a person um, and i would rather hide some extra width around than try to squish a template vertically because I think people can instinctively tell when things are just awkwardly squat but it's a little harder to tell when they've just been opened up 
bit more. Like, there's a reason we don't put tall people, or excuse me, uh, we don't put big people in over tall, or, or let me try that again, uh, to make people look good in clothes. We don't take larger people and put them in super tall pants and then, like, roll the, the, the cuffs up because that looks really silly. No, we take regular pants and we do things like add a gusset to them or we just add more material around the sides. We don't just suddenly add a really big, tall thing and then squish it down until, you know, where the knee should be is in a weird place. Uh, hence the cowboy hat brim problem. Pep does, takes the furthest parts and its widest parts, so you have to measure the interfaces. Yep, exactly. No, that that's exactly right. Sorry, I, I didn't follow you there for a moment, but that's exactly what we've been talking about. Uh, because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually double check this. Because of course, this is on an angle, so that's not exactly the measurement I meant to take it to. See, because now it's at 6.57. So hypothetically, I even wanted this a, li a little bit bigger, but I, I'll, I'll digress. I think this will be okay. Let's just double check that again. I think, gosh, I actually almost want that wider around. So to that end, Let's double check it front to back because of course this thing has way more uh, way more distance front to back as well as angles. Yeah, so I think that between the two of those things, this could fit hypothetically, but we need to take the scale down or else that knee is gonna just stick way the heck up. Um, so to that end, let's go ahead. We'll take a full measure here. Again, 22, we're, we're sitting at 22. I would prefer it, I think, because I don't want it to go all the way down to my foot exactly. I would prefer it somewhere in the neighborhood of 17 and a half. So let's go ahead. Or excuse me, 17 and a half from here to there roughly. So we need to take it down about three inches. Change scale, set scale vertically. We're going to cut three inches off. So let's make that 19.41. That might be pushing it, but I think between the added depth here, it should be okay. Um, and then, and now, now this thing should fit a little bit more reasonably. Let's actually do one more thing. I'm gonna double this measurement basically. So this should be about 14, 15, about almost 15 inches around. I'm just going to duck down and double check my ankle here. Yeah, that's going to be more than good. Uh, and it should give us enough space uh, around the top, actually, that we're able to grab uh, double this. So about 16 plus whatever this measurement is. About four, so about 20 inches around. So now I should be able to fit my thigh. Just give me about my thigh, the widest part of my shin in here. Yeah, that should be okay. Math, uh, but I think this is probably going to be okay. Let's just do a little bit of quick, little bit of quick um, uh, page optimization. We'll try to get this on it slightly fewer pages there we go yeah look at that actually I bet if I go like this yep I cut another page out too there we go sweet well, that was super easy we'll save that oh bluster girls ain't got no combs eve away hollow away Combs their hair with the kipper backbones, and we're bound away for Australia. Hall away, me bully bully boys. Eve away, hall away. Hall away, and don't you make a noise, and we're bound away for Australia. All right, so we have actually gone through and we've managed to save all of our... Hey there, Daniel. Hello, welcome to the stream. 
Uh, so we've actually managed to scale through uh, a lot of the armor tonight. This has been a really productive stream. I want to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, but now let's do some good old-fashioned pep Tuesday. Uh, before, in these templates, I had no ab piece to add to these. Um, and I managed to do some game rips and really tweak some stuff. Uh, and I'm working on this piece right now. So we can definitely go through uh, and just uh, do some good old-fashioned pep Tuesday. A little bit of uh, just finishing this up. As we wait, what on earth? Why is this adjoined? Oh man, I gotta undo this unfold. <laughs> That's okay. We'll just undo this, apply the open edge info, and re unfold it. That's fine. We'll finish scaling this at another time. Just because I kind of want to go through. This is not a perfect model by any means. I'm just trying to get a shape that I actually do like. Uh, let's see. Finish scaling some parts of the Doom Pet files from shoulder to shoulder. It's 20.75 inches. <whistles> that. 20.75. That feels too, too slim. That feels like it would it barely cover. Well, I, I'm, I'm broad of shoulder. I'm different. Never mind. Never mind. I, I could be crazy here. But 20.75 inches just doesn't seem like it would cut it, at least for a guy like me. Uh, because I'm bending that and it's not reading, reaching edge to edge. But I could be crazy. You could be a much, a much skinnier man. Most people are much skinnier men than I am. Uh, <laughs> regrettably. Uh, let's see here. Um, I bet I'd like to see if I can get this into sort of some semblance of a single shape here. Let's see here. Five nine, five ten. I'm very skinny. Okay, see that's the thing. Here's the thing. Your height. Your height's not a huge like factor in what we're describing here but if you're if you're a lot thinner than i am i i would say that 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 makes way more sense i i forget sometimes that not everybody uh is built like a a, a weird tank like i am. there we go let's see grab that i'm just trying to even this this out on the whole uh so that when we join adjacent edges the shape we're left with is fairly um fairly even overall just like that. And I think that's probably about where we want it. This is supposed to be more center, I think. Oh, this is upside down. I'm like, why am I looking at this and it seems strange? It's because it's upside down. This is supposed to be a little bit more center. I think this is going to be okay. Let's join these adjacent edges. Uh, if I'm not in love with this when we're done... Oh, those are bigger gaps than I was hoping for. If I'm not in love with this when we're done, uh, I can always go back and say... Um, yeah, that might, that might work. Cause then we got the curved edge there. Yeah, that works. Uh, I can always go back after I printed this and, you know, cut it symmetrically and get something uh, a little bit cleaner than the initial template. That's, that's fine. Uh, let's join these adjacent edges, see how it looks. That looks better. I can work with that. The one thing I'm not in love with is the fact that this edge is one face and that is two. I wonder if I can fix that real quick. Undo, unfold, apply that edge. But then I'm gonna go ahead and edit the model. Let's delete that edge. Let's just delete it and see how that looks. Oh, I like that a lot better. It's not perfectly even, but it's pretty good. Let's redo that then. Hey, yo, that's not the part I meant to grab. Ack, here we go. There's that piece, and here's this piece. Yeah, that's better. That's better. I like it. Yeah, I'll call that good for that front piece there. Let's try to grab do one face of this here. Oh, by the way, apparently it's Barbershop Harmony Day, which is pretty crazy. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I am uh, a, a barber shopper. I enjoy the barber shop, so maybe we sing some, sing some barber shop. It's a good time, friends. I'm trying to think, what would be a good song? What would be a good song to play? To sing, even. Hmm, could just sing a staple. <laughs> Our song was a song of tomorrow. Our 
heart or as high as the sky. Bright songs are forgotten and skies often gray. Nevertheless, there is this I can say from the first tale to the last goodbye. It's been awfully nice to know you. So excuse the parting sigh, and I watch you go with my head held high. You've been dear and sweet, a pleasure to meet. I special treat, says I, from the first hello to the last goodbye. Okay, sorry, Diaxis, while we have just been singing and chatting and doing stuff, has sent us another pelvis option. See, this is pretty nice, but I would still need to go back and add some detail to it. Uh, there's nothing... There's This is actually a really nice cod piece. I actually think this might be the cod piece I've already unfolded. Hang on. Because I, I remember the reason I stopped earlier is because I have... Yes, I have this cod piece. So I have... Um, I have grabbed and, and finished this cod piece before. Uh, it's a pretty nice cod piece overall. I just did, I wasn't happy with some of the detail because I was going to need to freehand a lot of extra parts, and I wasn't super into that. Um, let's see here. Uh, oh, how do you grab multiple pieces at once? Well, here is a great, great multiple options here, Melina. Let me go ahead and answer this question real quick. So you can just left-click, drag, grab as many parts as you want, and you can move them. Or you can hold control, left click, and grab just the parts you want and move them in the 2D window. Or you can do the same thing in the 3D window or a, a mix of the two if you want because you can unclick them here and still move them there. And I hold control when I do that, but you don't have to. <laughs> so, yeah. I, yeah, thanks so much, Diaxis. I really appreciate the thought. Uh, but I do believe, I, I, yes, I have done this one. Uh, before and uh, the reason I'm messing with this piece at all uh, is just because it has a little bit more detail and even if this this template just winds up being for Jaden because I have to go through and do a whole bunch of uh, crazy rigmarole to make it work I, I, I think I may still wind up doing it so that I don't have to hand draft quite so many um, quite so many parts Let's see because then this goes what right there basically um, that goes around the whole back edge pretty cleanly. Again, if I, and unlike my templates that I release, of course, uh, publicly, if this winds up being super messy and just for me, I'm okay with that. Because <laughs> uh, look, I mean, this part in particular even isn't uh, super symmetrical. It's kind of kind of wonk, but that's okay because it's it's giving me a good idea of where a lot of this. Uh, should should lay ultimately. <whistles> ah yes, the whistle, just what everybody wanted to hear. Ah <laughs> uh, yeah, because you can see this is super wonk side to side. I suppose here isn't all that bad. I can probably. Use that as a good reference between all these parts. Yeah, we'll see. We'll call that uh, unfolded-ish right here. And then, of course, like we said, we got this part, which will go around the back edge, fold in along that edge. That's pretty good so far. This can probably be mostly one piece right here. 
this butt plate. It's not perfectly round, but it is, it is something. <laughs> Down our way, both night and day, you know everybody and they all know you, and even policemen say, how do you do, pals by the score. And gals galore, and that old gang of mine, they sang sweet at old line down our way. Gee, but I wish that I could wander through the fields of clover and in the new moon hay and go strolling down a dusty country road amid the beautiful flowers that bloom in May. And on Saturday night you go a courting with your girly neat the bright and silvery moon. And on the way to church on Sunday morning people saying, How do you do? I'd like to sit once more and spin a yarn with all the boys down at the corner grocery store. I can almost see the good luck horseshoe hanging up above the village smithy's door. And that old gang of mine, they sang sweet at old line. How do you like to come along with me and wander down our way? Down our way. Behind When I leave the world behind <laughs> Oh, that's rough. God, anybody who knows the struggle of one really complex model just taking up an ungodly amount of space uh, in terms of pages and then something that should objectively be larger just not <laughs> oh god it's rough let's see here I think that's that's probably good horseshoe hanging up above the village smithy's door and that old gang of mine they sang sweet at old line Mm, the whole way down our way my wild Irish rose the sweetest flower that grows you may search everywhere but none can compare with my wild irish rose my wild irish rose the dearest flower that grows and some day for my sake she may let me take the bloom from my wild irish rose my rose the bloom from my wild irish rose how can there be any sin in sincere where is the good and good your apprehensions confuse me, dear. 
puzzle and mystify. Mystify, tell me what can be fair in farewell, dear. While one single star shines up above, how can there be any sin in sin? sunrise it's you in my calm it's you all the way into town it's your sweet hello dear that sets me off and it's your gotta go, dear, that gets me down. It's you on my pillow in all of my dreams. Till once more the morning breaks through. What words could be plainer, or truer, or saner, than it's you, it's you, it's you, only you, it's you on my pillow. At each break of dawn, a feeling that life can go on and on. What words could be saner or truer or plainer than it's you? It's you. It's none could be plainer or truer than true. It's you. Over in Killarney, many years ago, my mother sang a song to me in tones so sweet and low. Just a simple little ditty in her good old Irish way. And I'd give the world to see her and hear her voice today. Oh, tura lura lura, tura lura la, tura lura lura. Hush now, don't you cry. Oh. Tura lura lura, tura lura lura, 
that's in Irish lullaby. Oh, man. Here we go. All right. I think that this is about where I want to leave this stream. Uh, I think we've got this new piece pretty much all all where we want it to be. Uh, obviously, this is a very rough pep, unlike some of our other Pepicuras. Uh, but I think this will be really good for me, uh, just for my uses. Uh, but for now, uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out. This has been a slightly longer stream uh, than I think we initially thought it was going to be. Uh, but this has definitely been a lot of fun. I do hope there's been some good information for folks. Uh, if you yourself want to help support the channel a little bit more, of course, please subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Otherwise, we do have uh, a Patreon. Uh, you can find a link for that down below as well. Uh, we have 10 patrons, Ken, Sam the Man, Suit Up Props, Benjamin Stanley, Laura, Ruben, Matt G, Pandul Say, K-Snake, and of course, Austin of AJ Plays Piano. We thank you all so much for supporting the channel. Uh, if you like some of what we do, we do uh, sell a lot of our builds and uh, even some templates uh, over on our Etsy store. Uh, you can check that out down below as well. Uh, but for now, uh, I want to send you guys all off, and since it is the barbershop, uh, day, uh, I will send you off with, uh, the Irish blessing, which is something that I used to sing all the time with a bunch of my barbershop friends, and, you know, maybe I will again. Uh. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face, and the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in his hand. May God hold you in the palm of his hand. Thanks so much for being with us this Pep Tuesday. Hopefully we'll have a video out this week and another stream Thursday. Till then, take care.